If you know anything about Andy and me, you know that when he has an idea, uh, he doesn't share it at first. It kind of sits in his mind and he thinks about the different angles and he really plans things out and he troubleshoots and problem solves to the best of his ability before anything is ever shared with the world. Let's get this food. So I think that the, the subheading of the title kind of sums it up. It's cuisine for the modern nomad. So I wanted to take all these really good recipes, adventurous food, and make it super accessible for tiny kitchens, two burner stoves, and people that don't necessarily think of themselves as really good cooks. So when he told me that, that this is what he was doing, um, it made perfect sense to me. You know, it was a combination of what he was discovering as his passion for recipe development and cooking and all of that, uh, combined with our changing life circumstance. So it was, yeah, I think the idea was literally born out of everything that came before it and everything we were planning. So tonight we are preparing a four course meal for our friends Sam and Kate. Uh, we're doing like a Southeast Asian inspired dinner for them. They have spent a lot of time traveling abroad, so that was part of the inspiration for Andy's meal. We're doing good. We got an hour left till service. We got to make wontons, we got to make caramel sauce, we got to make broth, we got to make rice. Is that one cook? I will be okay. So I worked as a wildland firefighter and fire ecologist for the National Park Service all through my 20s. That was, that was my first career. And that is really kind of what got me hooked on nomadic life in the beginning, was living out of a truck and you know being with my crew in a new place every two weeks. Around the end of my 20s, uh, my body wasn't really up to it anymore. I was tired of never being home, not being able to make it to birthdays, weddings, that sort of thing. And so it was time to let go of what is very much a young man's job of wildland firefighting. And growing up, you know, I had always wanted to write. So writing was really the thing that got me started in this, but I also love to cook. The cliffside sushi was super special. Yeah, yeah that was a really, that was a great one. That was really awesome. And yeah, we were, uh, just outside Bishop, California, on some BLM land. And down at the end of the road, there is just this like big old cliff overlooking a little uh, meandering river. And being in California, we had access to a lot of good seafood and specialty markets. So we cooked up a gigantic sushi feast, enough for like six people probably. Walked out to the cliff's edge, set up a table, took some nice Instagram-worthy photos. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's something about eating sushi in the middle of the desert that feels pretty awesome. I grew up in a family where all of the men cooked. You know, that was just the, the household that I grew up in. My, my father loved to cook and was really passionate about food. My older brother Ian, one time I was maybe 14 years old and I was sick and everybody else was gone. It was just me and my brother Ian in the house. And he cooked me this fantastic meal of, uh, it was a goat cheese stuffed tuna steak. And I remember particularly that night him, you know, sitting down and talking to me about how important food was to him. And uh, also how useful a tool it was to woo women. But, uh... <laughs> so when I met Andy, he had a very quaint plot in the community garden in Boulder. And on one of our second or third dates, maybe, he took me to the garden and we spent an afternoon just pulling weeds and he was showing me what 
all the different vegetables were. And then we took the beets and the turnips and the shard back to his house and spent an afternoon cooking together and enjoying all of these ingredients that he had worked really hard to cultivate. And he cooked me this omelet and it blew my mind, like the best omelet I've ever had. And I do think that was the moment where I got like the googly eyes for him. Like I just fell in love a little bit. All right, here we go. You ready? Stop. You're not doing this right now, are you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can't do this right now. <laughs> oh my god, stop, really? You know, Iona always downplays her role in this whole thing. She always refers to herself as, you know, just the eater, but that's obviously not true. She is always my sounding board for new ideas. She is my number one taster and the person who probably has the greatest credit in deciding whether or not these recipes are good that end up in the cookbook. She washes a ton of dishes and she is increasingly uh, my sous chef. Take this guy. Do they have paper in between them or just the wrappers? It's just a bunch of starch between them. Okay. You take like a, something like a teaspoon to a tablespoon. Okay. Stick in the middle. Wet your finger. Grab the outside. Just half of the outside? Yeah. Okay. Bunch it closed in a rectangle. Okay. And then this way. Oh. Fold them up like that. Like little, okay. That makes cute little packages. Awesome. Cooking in a tiny kitchen is obviously going to be a challenge. We have, you know, a, maybe a couple square feet of counter space. Our sink is absolutely minuscule, maybe one square foot, no hot water. And we only have a three burner propane stove, no oven. So you're already at a lot of disadvantages when you start this tiny kitchen cooking. Two more, and then wonton mountain. She's in the home stretch. This is wonton mountain. I just folded 40 wontons. They look pretty dang good, I'd say. But at the same time, I think that those things can serve to actually improve your cooking a lot. All of that stuff, I think, really combines to make you a much better cook. I think this might be the most special anniversary we've ever had uh, because Definitely. it's just there's like this, this sense of community and... Um, it's just very exciting. Yeah, it, it seems... It's not just like a restaurant in a city. It's yeah, this is extra special. Yeah, it's, there's something cool extra stuff. nice about this. That's exactly, like we didn't just like make a reservation at a restaurant no. in the city, which is nice, but this has an extra <clears throat> special aspect to it. The creation of the cookbook was like 12 different processes all the time. Was the inspiration of new ingredients and new cuisines paired with recipe research and development, paired with troubleshooting and testing, paired with photos and writing and graphic design. And there was so much that went into it. I was absolutely terrified to move into this thing that is so focused on me and so focused on, you know, trying to create something that people are going to care about. It's always a scary thing as an artist to try to create something that you really want people to care about and that's important to you. And you just have no idea if anybody is going to enjoy it at all. After a couple of years of working on the Bus Life Kitchen, I finished the cookbook. I put out this Kickstarter 
to raise the initial goal was $10,000, raised the initial goal within a week. By the end, it was $15,000 raised, and it just blew me away. The excitement around it was something that I absolutely did not expect. I was terrified to put that Kickstarter into the world, and, you know, I was certain that it was going to fail. And then the absolute opposite happened, and that has been every step of this project for me has been meeting people, connecting with people, receiving so much enthusiasm that I just could not have foreseen. Yeah, so I just chicken skewers marinated and then uh, grilled and brushed with my Vietnamese pesto. That's course one. Amazing. <laughs> you have to push through that first wall of fear with any of these things. And the unfortunate thing is that once you've pushed through that first wall of fear, you find a bigger, scarier wall of fear. <laughs> but the important thing is to stay focused, be passionate, just keep pushing. You'll hear this from every artist, but I'm going to say it again. What you make in the beginning is not going to be very good. <laughs> You're going to produce a lot of garbage before you produce something that you're proud of and that was absolutely my journey I produced a lot of garbage I still I, you know all the time I'm full of self-doubt about the things that I'm putting into the world but they're getting better so for the second course we have a Thai inspired wonton soup mm. so it's a green curry coconut broth mm. with uh, wontons stuffed with minced shrimp ground pork uh, basil scallions Wow, this looks nice. incredible. incredible. Thank you so much. Wow. From inspiration to putting a meal in front of someone, that perfectly encapsulates everything that makes Andy happy. This is just this cool is... to have this in the woods. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're literally, like, off grid, and we're getting this, like, restaurant experience. Yeah. yeah. Wine from all from a bus. Yeah. You know, it's they're amazing. writing all of this. So, yeah. Thank you, What a cool way to show people that you care for them by putting a meal in front of them. Yeah, best anniversary we were just, you've ever had. Yeah, best anniversary you've ever had. That's awesome. So Can I hug you? you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I want to hug too. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. It's, it's so hard. It was. It was perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> we were just sitting out there. We were like, guys, this is like a Michelin three-star restaurant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, we're sitting in the middle of the woods. The ambiance is perfect. You do perfect. well. You do very well. Yeah. This, like these amazing entrees, like these courses just keep coming and the pairings keep coming and yeah. it's perfect. And we're and in everything... this forest just with friends. Oh yeah. my God, the it best, was, it was the incredible. best. When you read the book, you'll see that there are a lot of recipes that you recognize, uh, some more complicated than others, but every recipe fits onto a single page. So it can't be that difficult if it's all on one page. The whole thing is built around making it easy, cook, easy to enjoy, easy to share. The cookbook is available on Amazon. If you want a signed copy, you can pick one up at my website, thebuslifekitchen.com. And uh, yeah, we're always sharing updates about our lives and new recipes and all sorts of things on social media. There's another saying that I love about you can edit a draft, but you can't edit a blank page. You have to get that first crappy draft into the world and then then you can turn it into something worthwhile but without that first iteration you don't have anything mm -hmm.